Uh oh. Uh oh. What's up, people? Boop. Back. All right, all right. So, check it out. On tonight will be the last day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Which is important. If you guys can, please tune in tomorrow with Brother Simon. He'll be in service as well. Um, I believe it's 10 o'clock our time. Uh, 11 or 10.30 our time or Pacific time. 11.30 Belize time. Um... Whoa. Just getting back from Belize and uh I do say I miss it. I miss the people there. Um culture, the food, the food. Yeah. Alright, so as far as the feast of eleven bread, today marks the sixth day, the end of the sixth day by by sunset, and then after sunset marks the seventh day. Which would be the completion of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Um, it's important that we keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Not only uh, because the Most High requires it as a memorial. Um, concerning the Feast of the Most High. But also too as a reflection of where we're at in life. You know a lot of us believe in Jesus. I like to refer to him as Yeshua. And um. The thing is, he gave his life for us, right? And he's supposed to be coming back. And we don't know what time, what day, hour, year he's coming back. But we know it's going to be soon. We already know that the marks have already occurred. The beginning um, of tribulation um, has already occurred. And the thing is, if he comes back, are you ready? Are you ready to face him and be judged? Or do you got holes? Do you got holes in your walk? You know what I'm saying? Do you got sin in your life? Ultimately, man, we got to do the best we can to remove the sin from our life. Because that will get us caught. And we don't want to be caught unaware. We don't know what time, day, hour, year, the Most High is coming. But He's coming. And I'd rather that you guys be ready by repenting from all your sins and wicked ways. Within yourself, so I can see you in the kingdom, so I can see you make it, you know, with your children. We really have to evaluate what's important in our lives. Um, a lot of us think, okay, well, money is kind of like grand because, and we we don't always say money, but it ends up being money, right? Because we won't shut down a job. That pays really good money to keep the, the the most highest ways. And so that would kind of evaluate on where you stand with the most high. You know, your job means more to you than the most high. Well, that's not true. I love the most high with all my heart. Yeah, but you're not willing to give up your job for the most high. Because he does require that you keep the Sabbath. He does require that you keep the holy feast day. And yet... um. You know, we, we say, oh, well, he understand he understands that you're going to go to hell, you know, and it's, you know, well, God forgives. Yeah, he does forgive, you know, but like I will forgive my children, you know, a good father would. Now, the thing is, um, we take his forgiveness for granted. And um, 
a lot of the times it's not it's not good to do you know and my my son oh sorry dad you know i'm gonna get my grades up and this and that all right man well until your grades go up you know i'm taking your 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 xbox you know and i'm taking your ps5 you know what I mean? Once I see your grades going up, you might deserve your Xbox or PS5 back, you know? And so, sure enough, he'd be like, oh, dad, you know, my grades went up. They went up from an F to a D. Okay. All right, man. Well, I ain't trying to put too much pressure on you. You said they're going to go up. They are going up. You know what I mean? And so, it's a weekend. You know what I mean? What you going to do, right? I said, all right, man, look. Two weeks passed. Three weeks passed. Four weeks passed. You've been doing your chores. Your grades are going up. Things are looking good for you. So I'm okay. okay I'll give you a little grace, right? A little grace. All right, you repent it. You're going to get your grades up. You're trying to fix it. All right, let's look at our walk. All right, Father, look, I messed up. I done got drunk. Was in the club. Got drunk. You know? I'm not supposed to be drunkard. But yet, I got drunk. <laughs> Forgive me, Lord. I won't get drunk again. The father says, okay. Make sure you don't get drunk again. But until that, guess what? Got a DUI. Uh, maybe a wife gets mad at you or, you know what I'm saying? You're going to work late because you got a hangover. You know what I'm saying? You're asking for the most high to forgive you. Oh, he'll forgive you. But don't forget, you still have repercussions coming, right? Um, not by God's hand, but by the decisions you decide to make. So let's um let's go back to my son. Okay. So your grades are going up. You've been doing good with chores. You know, here's your PS5 and your uh yeah, PS5 and Xbox. Go ahead and play. You know what I mean? But you ain't playing during the week. Alright for sure, Dad. A month passes by. Alright. Grades are still steady. Another grade went up. Second month goes by right after that. Oh, another F in the same class. So what am I to say? All right, son. Yeah, I, I forgave you the first time. But uh, now it's judgment. Now, okay, cool. You ain't getting this back. Okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? You want to go out? Nope. You're stuck. You know what I mean? What you think is going to happen when the Most High come? When he catches you on your sin. You know what I'm saying? When he catches you red-handed and you didn't have time to ask for forgiveness. Let's say you got drunk and you went off the road and died. Let's say you got drunk and hit a car head on because that's usually what happens. You know what I'm saying? When people are drunk behind the wheel and accidents always occur. You know what I mean? I ain't trying to point the finger at anybody, but it's just a real life situation, right? And if we say that God is real in our life and God moves... And um, we love God. Let's get our life right. Right? Let's do things that are right according to his eyes and not our own. If I say I love God, I'm going to put my mouth and my heart where my faith is. I turn down police department jobs because they require that I work on the Sabbath and Holy Feast Day. And yeah, I always want to be a cop. Oh, well. But guess what? I can't do it because the most high. I'm not going to put my relationship with the most high in jeopardy because I want to keep a job. You know, I got offered an opportunity to make 40 an hour, 60 an hour working um with the government. Mm -mm. Had to turn it down because they needed me to work on Saturday and I'm not breaking the Sabbath. And so money doesn't move me. But what does move me is the most high in the spirit. You see, the, the Most High, He done saved me. The Lord saved me. Yeshua saved me. Jesus saved me. I was headed in the wrong direction. And the moment I chose to live according to Him, that's when my life changed. You know? A um, little testimony real quick. Um, I gave my life to the Most High, started serving Him. You know? Um, and it was like a year year two years went by and i was like god and i've been serving you for so long but there's certain things that i want out of life you know i want to i want a wife that could sing 
I want a roof over my head. I don't have to worry about where I'm going to sleep at because I was going from place to place, you know. So I want a roof over my head, a place to call home, somewhere I could be at and, you know, live there for a while because I was tired of house to house. You know what I'm saying? Apartment to apartment. You know, I'm always struggling. So I said I want a good paying job. I want three sons and a daughter. And we're talking about, I'm 40, so this was when I was 22, 24, and I was a drunkard, no, I was probably like 24, 23, 24, but I was a drunkard, when I started drinking when I was 13, okay, and um, not, not like to drink, drinking just was the thing, right, you want to be cool, fit in, you know what I'm saying, you want to be hood, or you want, you know, <laughs> yeah, being a drunkard is not the life, it's not the life that they portray. You know what I mean? Back back in the day, you know, having a 40 was cool and a 22 and, you know what I'm saying? It depended on what drink you were drinking. You know what I mean? Which, what made you cool? Um, oh, you ain't no hood. You know what I'm saying? What do you drink? And so, it's all dumb. But, going back, okay, cool. So, you know, most high, I want a white that could sing, a roof over my head, a place to call home. You know, I want three sons and a daughter. You know, if you give me these things most high, I will live for you. I will live after you. I will give my life. Yeah. And sure enough, <laughs> I didn't approach my wife. She approached me. And um, it turned out, you know, that my wife could sing. And she's currently the praise and worship leader at her church. Beautiful voice. Beautiful spirit on her. You know, her heart is to serve, which is amazing. Shortly after we got together, you know, I had a good paying job. We got a roof over our head. Been here for 17 years. You know what I'm saying? Um, I had three sons and a daughter, verbatim. My, my, my request unto the Most High was verbatim, and he gave me everything as my requests were made. And so I know that the Most High is real. He's showing me. He's given me so much, and everything I currently have is because of him. I will never say that I earned this alone. It was always the most high who had my back. And I'll tell you what, man. The moment you decide to let all the sinful nature go and really decide to put your voice, your life on the line for his sake, the more he will give you, whether it be spiritually, you know what I mean? Mentally, he'll give you knowledge, you know, um, for the Lord is a giver of knowledge, right? Um, or wisdom. He's a giver of wisdom. Um <laughs> things will change dramatically you have, you could you could receive the spirit of healing you know the spirit of discernment you know what i mean um man there's so much things man i've saved <laughs> the most high have allowed me to be in uh, a lot of people's lives to help them change their life um and, and you know at the end of the day it's not like i did it i know it was the most high he put us in situations and we just have to make the right choice the right choice okay i'm in a situation where i'm at the bar i know i shouldn't be drinking or getting drunk you know what i'm saying and so what am i gonna do all right hey guys i gotta bounce you know what i mean oh females pull up <laughs> i already know where this is going yeah let me get out of here you know what i mean we we can't put ourselves in a sinful uh attack you know what i mean and everywhere we go and there's some things we can't control the only thing that we control is ourselves. you know what i mean um and our will to keep fighting whether we're going to fall into temptation or stand on solid ground and i my friends decide to stand on solid ground i don't want to turn my back on the most high i don't want to continue in a sinful way and for the sin that i don't know that i commit if there be sin in my life i pray that it be removed and the most high forgives me for it a lot of the times we go through things uh we do things that we don't know is a sinful nature we don't know it until we're corrected. And if nobody corrects us, how will we ever know? And this is uh, this is the point of, um, you know what I mean? And my, my brother's keeper, we are. We got to look out for one another. We have to lift each other up. And when we fall, we can help pick each other up, right? Um, there will be problems in our life that we can't handle. But as long as we have real brothers and sisters in the Most High, it'll help us to stand. And if the most high is with us, who can be against us, right? And so, going into the seventh day of unleavened bread, 
um, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. You know, I, I hope that you guys can join us um, on the moral service. Um, Feast of Unleavened Bread, real quick, is a breakdown of we don't eat anything that has leaven in it. Um, this is to symbolize the sin in our life. We remove all sin in our life, but we also remove all leaven from the home, according to the book. Um, and so this was a, a memorial. We do this as a memorial unto those that had to go through the, the process um, of, of getting the sin out of the camp. Um, we know that when Moses came to the land of Egypt, he pulled his people out and they didn't have time to let the bread uh, rise and whatnot and put yeast into it. And so they had to go. And so the food that they were eating was unleavened bread. And, and that's the symboliz a symbolization. And the other one is the most high said, take, eat, this is my body. Um, and we're talking about Passover drink. This is my blood. You know what I mean? And so um, that was the beginning of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Um, and we know that Yeshua kept Passover. We know that Yeshua kept Feast of Unleavened Bread. Um, there's a few other ones um, that we'll get into later on as we go through um, go through them. Um, but the most high, uh, Yeshua, he kept all the feast days. People don't believe it. But believe it or not, Yeshua, Jesus, was a Jew. And so he kept the Jewish ways, right? Or Hebrew ways, we should say. And um, and I feel like we should keep them too, mainly because if we want to honor the Father God who is in heaven and his commandments are, hey, keep these holy feast days, uh, keep them until forever, then hey, I want to honor our Father who is in heaven and the Father that died on, on the cross for us or the tree. So praise Yah. For all you guys that are watching, I pray that, you know, um, the Most High will just bless your heart and your mind and uh, rejuvenate you and help you to get rid of the sin that's in your life. Um, you know, just ask and, you know, it, it, it will be given. Seeking you will find. Knocking the doors will be open. Blessings. Shalom.